Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Supergirl Season 5 and some other stuff related to some new articles and slash theories that have been released online. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Sorry for not uploading yesterday, I was away all day, you know, in a different city, so apologies for that. But today we're going to be talking about some Supergirl stuff specifically, also a little bit of Batwoman, but that's just in regards to some articles. And then we've got this theory someone brought up online, and it's a really great theory to do with Supergirl, and I definitely have to bring it up because it's really, really solid. But if you have any theory videos or ideas that I can upload, let me know, always let me know in the comments down below if you have ideas, any cool theories. I really love reading theories and, you know, different interpretations of, you know, stuff that happens in episodes, you know, whether it's last week, the week before, or anything like that, just leave a comment. I'd really appreciate that. So, yeah, let's talk about the first thing. So, the first thing is in regards to an article that a website called The Geek Buzz put up. So, the title is... Supergirl, Batwoman rating soar, no cancellation in sight. So this is in response to all the, you know, fake articles that we got discovered, and I think there was one called Bounding Into Comics. They were all releasing these fake articles being like, oh, Supergirl's gonna get cancelled, Batwoman's gonna get cancelled, Legends of Tomorrow's gonna get cancelled, because they've all got essentially agendas against the shows, right? Because, you know, it's a female-led show, you know, there's some political ideas and they are so against it that they are, you know, rooting behind the false narrative of, oh, these shows are going to get cancelled just because they want it to. But anyway, so this is in response to that, to those bullshit articles. And so I'm going to read through his article because it's very good and it proves a lot of the ideas that I've been talking about over the past few months when obviously all these different ideas oh the Superman show's coming oh Supergirl's gonna get cancelled because there's a Superman show no that's not the case so let's read this article so despite unsourced rumours being pushed by sites like We Got This Covered like I mentioned and the unabashedly alt-right bounding into comics like I mentioned Batwoman and Supergirl are in no danger of being cancelled in fact ratings are soaring Last Sunday's overnight ratings found CW programming up across the board, with Batwoman registering 1.16 million viewers, second best of all the CW shows. Supergirl was close up behind, up almost 10% in total audience viewers this past week. So yeah, Supergirl had a few drops and stuff like that, but we'll talk about that in a sec. So these aren't the kind of performances, it goes on to say, that gets shows cancelled on the CW network. Shows that also enjoy significant Live Plus 3 and Live Plus 7 rating boosts. And so, just quickly talking about this before I go on to enhance further into this article. So, just in regards to what I mentioned with Supergirl, yeah, the ratings were lower the past few weeks, like they were under a million. It's gone up this week, it's gone up 10%. I don't know the exact figures, maybe it's just under a million again, however, it's gone up. And the thing is, if you look at all the other CW shows, and I've said this many times before, it's still pretty damn high up, it's like, you know, second, third, fourth best performing TV show on the CW, and it, I think reportedly last year, yeah, it had a few dips in the viewership, it was the most profitable TV show on the CW, I'm pretty sure, in terms of advertisements, so, yeah, no worries about Supergirl, Batwoman's doing very, very well right now, you know, registering over 1.16 million viewers last week, and, you know, it's very, very steady, so, anyway, continuing with the article, certain fan sites are engaging in a subtle form of trolling by pushing the narrative that DC's female-fronted shows aren't as popular on the network, explains television writer Craig Belfer. It isn't as extreme as the Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb review bombing that alt right does to movies and shows, but the intended message is the same, women should be kept in their place. So let's talk about this, this is obviously a big topic and a big broad ranging subject of how these certain fan sites, and it is fan sites, it's not like official sites, and you get this on YouTube actually a lot with the Batwoman content. 
there is a lot of people online who are completely toxic. I don't normally use that word, but they are, that's the perfect word to describe them. They are just, you know, they've just got an agenda against that specific show, but also a lot of people have it against Supergirl. Like it says, because it's this female-fronted shows, they try and push this narrative that, oh, they're going to get cancelled or something like that, because they're not as popular, when in actual fact, like it said, Batwoman was the second best ratings of all the CW shows recently. And Supergirl, like I said, to do with adverts, made them the most money last year. So, that's false. This is them pushing their agenda, and I completely agree with this article. Obviously, you guys may have differing opinions, but I'm, it's pretty damn obvious that they are pushing a false narrative where they are trying to, you know, essentially bomb the show or, like, give it a reputation that it doesn't actually have. Anyway, so, that was all the controversial stuff out of the way. Let's move on to talk about the Supergirl theory. So this is for season 5 and it's to do with Leviathan, so I found this online and it's very good, I'll, I'll leave the link in the description below to it. So yeah, like I said, the theory is to do with Leviathan and the theory is that Leviathan is from the future. So Brainy made several references to technology and this is how the post goes, that shouldn't be invented yet. For instance, Q-Waves which has been playing a big role in Obsidian North Tech such as the VR lenses and so there's a photo on the screen right here that you can see to do with you know the advancements and you know Brainy said you know this technology shouldn't be created yet right so continuing on from that we already know Andrea works for Leviathan because you know we got that big revelation last episode and then the episode before when she's been working with Leviathan obviously she's not completely working for them, she's been forced to work for them, and they play a role in the success of her company, which obviously links Leviathan to Obsidian North, you have to remember that. But also the medallion, which Andrea found, has a very similar pattern, and it translates to Leviathan. So it's all linked, and all this technology can be linked to Obsidian North and Leviathan as well. So, Wynn is returning later in this season, and what are the odds that his return has something to do with that, and the idea that Leviathan, or a few members of Leviathan, are from the future, and that's maybe what the Legion are doing at the moment, say they've defeated Brainiac, this is why Wynn comes back, or something like that. I think that would be really interesting, but I think the big picture here, what I'm trying to get at, is that everything seems to point towards this theory being correct, that yeah, maybe Leviathan is from the future, and, you know, they keep on popping up everywhere, like, just completely out of nowhere, very, very futuristic, like, they're teleporting or something like that. Also, the link to Leviathan and how they were able to change, you know, what was going to happen to her father, to Andrea's father, the fact that, you know, they were able to make Obsidian successful again and everything like that, that's just not a fluke. So it all really links back to Leviathan, and I think the idea with the medallion saying Leviathan is going to be very meaningful in that, you know, this thing is ancient, right? Why would it say Leviathan? Maybe, yeah, this is like the medallion that they worship, and, you know, maybe it's something like that. However, it says Leviathan, and this thing is linked to Andrea, it's linked to everything, and the fact that Q Waves is here in the past, in the present, obviously our present, is massive because Brainy has made several references to how this technology is very futuristic and in his timeline it's not created till later. So maybe it's from a different timeline, maybe it's from the future, brought back by members of Leviathan. And so, yeah, Obsidian is using all this futuristic tech that shouldn't be made. So that links to the idea that maybe there is time travellers. Also, like I said, the medallion. But, you know, how they changed the odds of, you know, the success of her company and how everything just went up. Like, that could be some time travel stuff that they've changed. Very interesting theory. Go check it out. It'll be in the description below. What do you, what do you guys think about all of this? What do you think about that article that I mentioned earlier to do with Supergirl and Batwoman? But anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe if you're new. We're really close to 100,000 subscribers. We are 400 subs away. It would mean the world to me if you are 
a normal viewer who has been here for a long time if you could share these videos around share the channel around as we try and reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year it's going to be great fingers crossed we can do it thank you guys so much for your support and i'll catch you guys later goodbye I see red.